Okay, this is a hopefully, <laughs> hopefully a, a quick talk about uh, um, the alternator belt on a 1995 Holden Rodeo made by Isuzu. So it's all. The reason I say that is because it's all um, it's all Isuzu. Okay. Okay, so. This is the belt you'll need. I did have uh, some complications with this fan belt. Okay, but this one fits well. Uh, I got one on eBay. Um, that was too long. So the one I got from eBay, uh, when it was at the, the right tightness or any tightness, it was at the full travel of the, um, of the adjustable area there. So. I'm just just bear with me see so but this one this one's a good belt that fits well just bear with me while I, I keep on focusing this thing um, where did I get that I think auto one or something like that so that's a good belt it's uh, it doesn't have any undulating ribs or anything it's uh, it's full it's got the full profile uh, how can I film that? It's got the full uh, V profile, so that's that's about as much as I'm going to be able to get on that one, I think. See, so uh, that's it's all good. Um, yeah, so I don't know what else to say really. Um, you don't have to remove the fan or anything. Um, you can just sort of slip this through the blades, like get it through here and then through the next one and just bring it up. Um, it's the same with uh, the, uh, the power steering there. Power steering belt. So that's the power steering belt. Um, I might be able to help just by showing a little bit here. Just how you get it through the uh, so that virtually falls right through there. It should should come through the uh, the bottom of the fan there. There's a lot of shoulds in the world, but it's not going to happen on camera. Yep, there we go. So that's that's through. So that goes on the outside and uh, up through here. Uh, just a sec. Okay, so that would be the method for the alternator belt. But this one's too easy and I'm not used to uh, doing things the easy way. This just uh, simply just goes on. It just goes over the top. Alternator drive there. And you bring the alternator back. I'll show you how to adjust that. Well, you can see that moving there. So that just slips, that would slip on over the bottom bottom drive there. Okay, so that's the two belts there. The alternator and the power steering. So uh, uh, these days I've got a serpentine belt to do the uh, the alternator power steering and uh, the uh, cam drive so yeah any more than that is just wasting time so that's uh, that's all good so I can now this is in storage just again that's this is the one and as I said I did buy a few um, one didn't fit or well, sorry one was at the full extension of the uh, the adjustment for the alternator um, the other one was too short but uh, this one's good so yeah this is in storage I start it once a month um, just in short what's what's a car maintenance all about it's all about the fluids it's all about the fluids um, the engine oil you change every 5,000 kilometers um, automatic transmission you you just drain the pan and refill it when you uh, change the uh, the engine oil okay um, 
uh, gearbox uh, stick shift. Well, every 60,000, I suppose. Change the oil. Okay, that's really all that it's it's about. Uh, filters. Change the uh, the fuel filter once a year in a uh, a petrol or gasoline engine. That's it's really as simple as that. Okay, over and out. Another important thing is how you drive the car. If you uh, abuse it and uh, place a lot of pressure on the brakes and the engine and do uh, a lot of heavy driving, then it's not going to last. Um, don't get me wrong, I do do a fair amount of maintenance. So this is my once a, um, a once a year routine. Okay, this this has applied to uh, different vehicles, so I cross out what doesn't apply to the vehicles I've got now. As you can see, it's uh, quite involved. Okay, um, there's also a degreasing uh, routine. Okay, so uh, look until this is what I think for what it's worth. Um, until we change over to electric. Um, I know a lot of people don't believe in electric and uh, have all sorts of different um, uh, arguments for that. But until we switch over to electric, you know, it's just going to be very complex and involved um, keeping a, a fossil fuel engine on a uh, car on the road. That's my view. Okay, these are 14 millimeter uh, nuts. Uh, that's the adjustment nut just there. Comes off through that. And down here is another one, so that's that's it just there. That's it just there. You can just see it. So you've got to back that off, um, back this off. I found that it, just by pushing on the uh, alternator, I could get the right tension, and then I did those up. Um, the bolt is a long bolt on the bottom one. It goes to the other side with the nut. Um, a lot of them do slip. And you have to get a, um, a spanner on the, the nut. But this one held and I was able to do it up. Um, the, the power steering. I've just got a uh, small breaker, breaker type bar there. And there's a hole there that that slips into. And I've got a, uh, a spanner, a bigger one than this. And I just got the torque by uh, pushing down. And you've got uh, the, uh, the adjustment is here so you need to do that up um, I undid also this one here to get it to move and you do that up as well okay hope this helps this is the worn uh, that's the worn alternator belt I'll just turn that inside out okay so we can see that that's worn and this is what you look for is that uh, type of wear there If you do have a car in storage, um, please start it up once a month. And uh, I'm sorry, but uh, you have to keep the battery on uh, trickle charge, okay, with a, uh, a low amperage, so that when you um, you remove the battery when it's in storage and put it on charge once a month, start it up, put the battery in, start it up. Uh, go for a small drive up and down the driveway a few times. Don't go out on the road if it's not registered. And uh, that's how you keep them running. Okay, uh, turn everything, turn everything on. 
and uh, use everything in the cab. Put your foot on the brakes, clutch, etc. Make sure all the lights work. Um, if you need to uh, register it, if your car breaks down and your hobby car or your storage car is available, you need to be able to uh, know that everything works. In all my videos I show that I have a uh, fuel pressure gauge and a battery gauge always running on all of my vehicles. Um, so fuel pressure gauge Uh, by the way, uh, I'm glad I remembered to talk about this. Uh, the older cars have got a fan, and that's the fan there. Okay, now if you put your fingers in there, you'll get them hurt or chopped off. Okay, I'll just show that. Okay, uh, they don't have them anymore because they're too dangerous. But if you see a person reaching where, wherever there's an engine around, if you see a person going very slowly into the engine, please don't tell them to, to work fast. Or um, It's just uh, older people are brought up to be very careful around um, engines because of the fan and moving parts. Um, also, uh, the battery gauge. Okay, so the battery gauge allows me to tell two things. If the battery is healthy and um, if the alternator... I don't know, that sounded like a horn, I don't know what that is. Um, and if the alternator is, uh, is okay. 